guys and welcome back to my channel thank you for coming back um so today i am doing the q a that i have been promising it's actually my first q a so i'm super super excited um so i posted on instagram and had you guys ask me some questions and i also um, posted on Snapchat and Instasnap and you guys deemed me some questions that you want me to answer and a lot of the questions that actually were the same and there were a couple of interesting ones too so I'm gonna get into it um, and we'll go from there so from the beginning how did you get into how did I get into competing well I've always been an athlete my whole life and you know being an adult you don't really get to have an outlet you don't get to have goals to work towards you don't get to uh, be in a league of any kind and try to be competitive and win and like work towards something and um i know some people look at bodybuilding and um bikini competitions as not a sport not an athlete but i mean if you are if you look like this, then you're doing something. You're training for something. I mean, you don't look like me from just chilling at home. And um, you don't look like me just chilling and eating pizza all day. So, I mean, you are training. You are an athlete. You are in the gym day in, day out. And it's, it's great to have a goal. So I wanted that. I wanted something to work towards and something to be competitive at because I am come competitive like if you guys have seen my other videos you know how competitive i am like after every show i always give you a rundown i always tell you hey listen like i think that i i should have won <laughs> so no matter what i always i'm just competitive and there's nothing wrong with that so you know i wanted something so i said you know what i was actually at a fit expo and i was like i can do that i can get on stage and freaking um wear a bikini and get fit you know whatever so i just started prep on my own like didn't hire a coach I just started prep and just did a show and um, you know once you do your first show you either hate it or you love it and me be competitive I didn't place and so I was like no fuck that I want to do another one and I'm gonna place okay so I did another one and, and once you do one you want to keep doing them over and over and over and I told myself in the beginning I want to train myself and I want to do this myself. So I did, and here I am three years later, and I'm still my own trainer. I'm still learning my body and how it reacts to things. And I think that really the success in this is to learn what your body reacts to and how good you are um, with carbs, with fats, with high protein, low protein, you know, um, low fats, high fats. I mean, it's really, really an art scene because it is not a cookie cutter plan. I mean, you guys can literally Google bikini prep program right here and they'll tell they'll, you'll they'll be there but whether it works for every single person differently I mean that's really I mean it varies so I wanted to do it on my own and so I did it and here I am three years later moving on <laughs> I wanted to be competitive so that's what I did next topic um advice for women who want to put on muscle be patient do you know how long it takes to put on muscle ask a man ask a man who is 25 years old who has the athletic build but he's he's building for his bodybuilder body you know putting on two pounds of muscle I mean it, it will take months just to put on two little pounds okay so you need to be patient you need to take photos, number one, because you will not see the day that that muscle just pops up. You, you're not going to wake up and be like, oh, my bicep is bigger. I finally built that muscle. Like, you, that's just not how it works. So take photos every single week. Lift heavy as you can. You should not, if you're a beginner, you should not be going weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks on the same weight. Always go up, and once you hit that, um, that top because obviously when you start you're doing 10 pound curls and you move up to 15 then you move up to 20 um, I'm pretty sure I stopped that 20 I mean it's not like you're about to be lifting 55 pounds you're gonna you're not going up every single week there's a cap but if you're 
Um, it's up to your discretion to figure out what that cap is. So can you lift extremely heavy, but you don't know because you're lifting the same thing every week? Don't get complacent. Switch it up. Do different things. Do high reps, low weight, low weight, high reps. You know, switch it up. <laughs> That's the same thing. Um, <laughs> to begin building muscle, it's always do lower reps. So like five to eight reps of just heavy, just extremely heavy. And if you haven't tried that, definitely check it out. When you first start lifting, it's always three sets of 10, three sets of 10. But if you're by that 10th rep and you're not just like, oh, fighting to get it up, move up and wait. You're, you shouldn't be doing this. This is, not, this is not a set. You shouldn't be doing this the whole set. You should be really working hard the entire set. It's eight, uh, two more, nine, uh, two more, 10. Like you should be working yourself. Like, absolutely killing yourself okay not literally but you need to be pushing yourself and be honest with yourself if you don't think you can push yourself get a trainer because they will push you and if your trainer doesn't push you then get a new trainer that will because you're never ever going to get results doing 200 reps of 10 five pound dumbbells you're just not sorry and biceps is the workout today because that's the only body part you can see so we're talking curls all right so lift heavy and eat your protein, okay? Eat your protein, you need it. Uh, make sure that you're getting enough. I know a lot of people will just not track, they just eat whatever, and they're like, okay, well, I had a shake afterwards, and you know, they're not eating enough in order to fuel the muscles. Your muscles will not grow if you're not eating enough, and you know, you don't want all that hard work in the gym to go away because you didn't eat, so eat. <sighs> okay, next. Um, advice for new competitors, things that I wish I knew when I started competing. Hmm, I probably should have thought about this before because there are some controversial situations in competing where I don't know if I want to get into that or not because I don't want to scare people. But I do wish that I knew about teams, um, getting to know the judges, um, just the political aspect of it because at the end of the day there's a huge role there it plays a huge role and to think that it doesn't it's just absolutely silly it's crazy I knew nothing about it going into my first show I'm telling you I was like a little brand new baby bird just couldn't wait to fly and I was like yes I can't wait and then I get to the show and no kidding like there's like I think there were like three huge teams and, you know, all of the judges were there and they're all chatting it up. And I mean, everything was just like really like weird. I mean, obviously being a competitor that <laughs> competitor that trains yourself, um, you're going to be left out anyway. But I felt like it was very. Uh, yeah. So anyway, without that in mind, um, the actual aspect of competing. First of all, I wish I knew about reverse dieting post show. OK. My first year I did compete, I did three shows my first year, and I was on prep from about February all the way until, until August, until September, February to September. I didn't have a post-show plan. I didn't actually like blow up and get fat, fat or anything, but I didn't have a plan and I didn't, I wish that I did have a plan. So if you are competing, have a post-show plan because you don't want to just go into nothing. <laughs> um, I wasn't even going to compete the next year. Actually, that was this year. Anyway, um, and th the number one thing, always the mental aspect of competing. Mentally prepare yourself, okay? You need to be strong. You need to be confident in yourself. This isn't something I wish I knew because I've always been confident, but I want you guys to know before you compete, Love yourself. It does not matter what the hell the judges say. I mean, unless you're trying, well, if you're competing to go pro, take into account what they say. And if what they say aligns with what you think that you need to work on, by all means, keep going for that pro card. But if they say that you need to completely change your whole body because you look horrible to them, which they would never say that. They're super nice. They're really, really nice. Um, the, and you don't want that for yourself, don't do it. Don't change your body for, for a sport. Like, don't do it. 
you can you can be fit in other ways like you don't need to compete it's really just it's a pastime it's a way to blow your money it's expensive as hell i mean it's it's dumb to do i'm just gonna tell you that like unpopular everyone's gonna say it i mean everyone thinks it but they don't say it it's it's you're just throwing your money away really but it's something to do i enjoy doing it i love doing it if you don't have a lot of money if you don't want to waste your money and if the judges if you, the judges view of you don't is not what you want for yourself don't do it it's seriously not worth it it's not so see now that sounds like i'm telling you not to compete but i do want to tell you it's a lot of money okay learn these things so love yourself it's a lot of money politics are involved um and be aware just be aware keep your eyes open uh, meet the judges because every time they see you they know you they remember you they see okay so when you're at check-ins you're at registrations hello i'm melanie nice to meet you you know i'm always super nice um so yeah those are things i wish i knew or not that i wish i knew but those are tips for beginner competitors and i know that has nothing to do with training has nothing to do with diet it has nothing because you guys have heard everything stick to your training stick to your diet and you know, you'll be good, but those are the outside things before you get into competing. It's a lot of money, it's politics, meet the judges, love yourself, okay? Cool. Okay, so this is a weird, crazy question. And I mean, I feel kind of bad to not answer it. So I'm gonna go to Instagram right now and read this question because I'm, it's interesting. Okay, being a seasoned competitor, do you think that there are categories that minority competitors tend to place lower or higher in, or do you think the judging is even across the board? I ask because I don't see many African Americans that do bikini. You seem to do well, but I was just curious. So this one is gen gender related. Race. So I believe that the thing with that is one thing I'm grateful about my body is that I've been able to put on muscle very well but I'm also soft at the same, like I'm a great mixture of softness and, um, and muscle. And that's just the way my body developed. I know that it is a 100% fact that black people build muscle easily. I mean, that's just the way it is. And a lot of it has to do with conditioning. So um, being on stage, a lot of it has to do with conditioning. So you build all this muscle and then you just condition the fuck out of your body. Bikini is not meant to be lean. They don't want lean. They want, they want muscular soft. I mean, I've finally figured out what they want. <laughs> they want you to be muscular, but soft at the same time. They don't want striations and they don't want veins, but they want you to be lean still. They want that glute hamstring tie in that's, they want you to be tight, but with water, <laughs> you know what I mean? They don't want striated, lean as fuck, like the figure girls. And a lot of mistakes that I guess black or just muscular people in general do is they will um, get conditioned to the point of just absolute leanness, which is not what bikini wants. But let me tell you, there have been some girls this year winning pro shows that are that have that look, and I'm just shocked. I think that bikini's moving more towards the muscular striated situation. But traditionally, black girls, I guess, just do better in figure because their muscle is just oh, it's just so amazing. <laughs> but it just gets conditioned to the point of okay, you went too far. Now you need to like take like seriously five weeks of eating to get that softness back you know so there's what you need to do is you need to assess how muscular you are and like chill in the conditioning and i know that i know that it's really hard it's hard to do but once you start seeing vein i mean i started like seeing veins in my freaking boobs but i don't know it, i mean you just have to stop when it becomes too much like once you become over that line of condition for bikini you're just figure and it's just like that and this is not just for black girls obviously it's for all muscle all muscular women who get lean easily but i mean we don't just put muscle on like we fucking put muscle on i mean like i feel like 
black people should absolutely dominate bodybuilding. But as I said, the shit's expensive, okay? And to generalize, which I hate generalizing, we don't tend to spend money on stupid shit. Like, this is a first world as fuck sport. I mean, you're paying to have a judge panel of people judge you. Do you realize how, like, ridiculous that sounds? Especially if you have children or you have a family. I mean, obviously not judging anyone, but um, I'm just saying, like, there's... So to simplify, why do black girls not win bikini most of the time? Except you do well. Um, I'm soft still. I didn't over-condition. Um, don't over-condition. Don't get strided glutes. Um, don't go into figure. I mean, like, don't get so lean that you look figure. I mean, that's just the way it is. We put on muscle easily. We need a leg. Shield it. <laughs> Stay away from it. I really hope that answered it. I mean, I hate, I hate race things. I hate shit that has to do with the race, but it is a fact that we just, we were used to put on muscle. Look at Mally. Look at him. Oh my God. He's so cute. So, yeah, that was the um, general advice for people competing, which I kind of, like, covered this already, but I will close on this fact that um, know what you're getting into. I like to simplify things. For instance, if I'm, um, you know, you're just living life, you know, just, just write it in one sentence. What are you doing in life? Well, I'm a personal trainer who competes. Do you like that sentence? Do you think it's a good sentence? So um, look at competing. I'm paying money to have people judge me and tell me I look as good as the other girls that look good and won their shows too, and they're going to decide whether uh, one of us gets to be pro. <laughs> Does that sound good? Okay, great. So if that sounds good and you want to move forward, then keep moving forward. But if that does not sound like something that you want to do, then don't do it. You don't need to do it. And as I've said in another video, um, you don't need to compete to be successful in the fitness industry. Just be relevant. Just um, post, you know, maybe make a blog, maybe like do, <laughs> maybe, um, you know, just, just put yourself out there. See what happens. Um, create an, uh, like a, something that st keeps you apart from other people. Um, really like build up your marketing Oh my gosh, one thing I want to say, guys, this is, I'm so glad that I thought about this. Instagram names. Can we just talk for a second? Can we not do Jessica underscore peace, yo, underscore one, two, three, four, six, seven, fit? Like, stop. What if somebody, what if you're at the Fit Expo and you just look great, you are wearing this outfit from this company that happens to be looking for people to sponsor. Oh my God, girl, you look great. We want to shoot with you. What's your Instagram name? Um, it's Jessica underscore, um, uh, underscore zero three five seven six, um, underscore fit, like stop. Okay. Get something that is easy to remember. Get a name that you can put on every single thing. Stop with the crazy names. And also um, people like me who I like to comment back to every single person. Instagram doesn't give you those names. Like I literally have to single type everybody's name. So when your name is J underscore U underscore S underscore T, I'm like, <sighs> thank you. Like, <laughs> please stop with the complicated names. Um, not just for me, but for you too, because if you're in public and someone asks you for your name and you, that's your name, they're going to be like, no, forget this girl. Like, we're not even going to find her. She's ridiculous. Like me, what's your name? Melifit. Twitter, Melifit. YouTube, Melifit. Instagram, everything is Melifit. Okay, fucking Google it. All right. So go think of a name. Get, get the underscore, leave the underscores, leave the dots, leave all that stuff out. Just get something that you can easily put. Um, I just added that random social media thing. And also while we're on social media, um, I have 8,600 followers right now, which like whatever, you know, is a lot or not a lot, who knows, but I hate it when people, when you comment on people's stuff and they don't comment back, it's like, okay, you're that 
you're that busy and you're that big that you can't respond to people who are like complimenting you like how rude like they took time out of their day to tell you you look great you look amazing blah 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 i don't know about you guys but i expect response <laughs> um especially if someone does not have a million followers so i don't know i see people tina tina yang tina i forgot her name and valentina esteban both of the both of them they have like triple quadruple thousand whatever amount that i do and they always respond and i'm like wow like such respect to you like that is amazing that you take time out of your day to remember us little people <laughs> like thank you so as you guys are growing your your business as you're growing your instagram don't forget about the people that make you who you are don't forget about the people who are there for you supporting you giving you likes sharing your stuff like you can't forget about them, okay? Respond to everybody, all right? You are not bigger than that because without your followers, you ain't shit, all right? So <laughs> with that, I hope that this helps you guys. If you like this, give it a thumbs up and maybe I'll do another Q&A along the line when I'm a little bigger. Um, I am doing a 10K giveaway on Instagram because I feel like that is just a freaking milestone for me, like 10,000 human beings i haven't bought any followers i haven't like done anything to get more followers you guys know i'm cheap as fuck and i would never spend money on followers plus i want people who are following me for me so the fact that that many people on this earth like clicked follow even if it's like those accounts that unfollow follow unfollow that shit i mean physically clicked follow like I appreciate every single one of those. So 10K giveaway on Instagram. If you're not following me on, me on Instagram yet, then I'm, I'm just a little hurt. Um, that's okay, but go follow me because I'm doing a giveaway. Don't know what it is yet, but stay tuned. Thank you guys for watching this. If you liked it, subscribe. I hope you like my new beautiful hair. I just got it done yesterday. I'll be vlogging later. And of course this is long, so yeah peace out guys my show is freaking next week next week i'm in pittsburgh for nationals again <sighs> not again but again as in another nationals okay i'm leaving gotta go eat bye